Welcome to 3AM Sabbath School panel. This is a panel of studying God's Word. We're studying the book of Psalms, and the author of the lesson is Dragoslava Santrak. She's the main contributor, and we are on lesson number four, The Lord Hears and Delivers. Our panelists are here. They have been studying and praying, and we have prayed for the blessing of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to pray in a moment, but we would like to introduce the family that was with us today. Uh -huh. We have evangelist Ryan Day. Amen. I have Monday's lesson entitled Assurance of God's Care. Amen. Looking forward to hearing that. And Sister Shelley Quinn. Pastor Johnny Dinsey, we are so excited to be joining you. My lesson is The Lord is a Refuge in Adversity. Amen. Amen. Professor Daniel Perrin, what do you have? I am sharing Wednesday's lesson, Defender and Deliverer. Thank you. We're looking forward to hearing that. And we have Sister Jill Morricone. We surely will have another list today. <laughs> we do indeed. Thank you, Pastor Johnny. I have Thursday, help from the sanctuary. Amen, amen. Uh, I want to let you know that our panelists have consented to share their notes with you. Now, please understand these are not word for word what we will say here, but notes that will guide us along as we do our presentation. How can you get a copy? You can email us at ssp at 3abn.org. I will say that again. SSP for Sabbath School Panel at 3abn.org to get a copy of the notes. You can email us to get a free copy. We're ready for prayer, and I'd like to ask Pastor Ryan Day if you'll please lead us. Yes, absolutely. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, as we give this time to you in study, I pray, Lord, that all of the words that we read in the Psalms, may it not just be words on a page, may it not just be another poetic excerpt that we find from Scripture, Lord, but rather may they come alive to us, may they mean something to us. Yeah. And use us on this panel, Lord, to bring clarity and understanding to what the Word of God is saying. And may we encourage someone and bring hope today, we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. We are ready to begin. Our lesson is entitled, once again, The Lord Hears and Delivers. The scriptures that we will be mainly focusing on is Psalms 139, verses 1 through 18, Psalm 121, Psalm 17, verse 8, Matthew 23, 37, 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16, and many other scriptures, but these are the main ones. The memory text comes from Psalms 34, verse 17, and we have these wonderful words. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Praise the Lord. You know, as we look at the Psalms, you see that God is a caring God, a loving God. Nevertheless, we see in the Psalms expressions of people going through difficulties, trials, and problems, yet they are clinging to the Lord, asking Him for deliverance. And the assurance of Psalms 34 is that the Lord hears and delivers His children. Uh, our Lesson continues with Psalms 73, verse 23. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You see a picture here of God holding us by the right hand, leading us uh, through difficulties and troubles and through the cares of life. Psalm 145, verse 18 and 19. Notice the Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear Him. He also will hear their cry and save them. My name is John Dinsey. For those listening by radio, we'd like to ask you to join us now in Psalm 119, verse 151, another scripture that tells us that God is near. You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. Mm. Wonderful scripture. Psalms 34, 18, so many of them. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Amen. So if you have a broken heart mm -hmm. going through difficult time, know that the Lord is near. Yes. He is near to you right now. I'm reading from the lesson now and it says, we should remember that the proper response to the Lord's nearness consists in a life of faith in Him. Mm -hmm and of obedience to His commandments. Nothing short of this faith and obedience will be acceptable to Him as the history of Israel often revealed. You can see in the history of Israel that when they were faithful, wonderful things happened to them. They were greatly benefited. 
Now, please understand that God is always blessing his children, no matter what their situation is, because he brings rain, he brings sunshine, and all of the people of the world receive the blessing of those gifts from the Lord that come to us each and every single day. Sunday's lesson is entitled, My Frame Was Not Hidden From You. This uh, day of the week focuses on Psalms 139, beginning in verse 1. And so let's go there right now. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You have, you know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. God is so acquainted with us that even our very thoughts are known by him. And he is all powerful. You know, as you study God and his character, you will notice that he's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. He is all powerful, all knowing and all present everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. praise his name for that. We continue now in Psalms 139 verse 3. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. So even before we speak, the Lord knows. He knows our very thoughts. Now this is a blessing and should be a blessing to you. And we are instructed to be slow to speak and swift to hear. And you know that many thoughts that come through your mind, if you had said them all, you would be in serious trouble. <laughs> uh, I know I would have been in serious trouble if I had said everything that comes to my mind. So the Bible gives us instruction. Be slow to speak, swift to hear. And how many of us have said things that we say, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, yeah. hmm. In John chapter 10, verse 10, we have a scripture that helps us understand the care of the Lord because it says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The background of this, Psalm 139, is that God is ever present, there with us, knows our thoughts and wants to help us and protect us. Why? Because he knows, he can see from where he is, everything, uh, you know, you're traveling over here, he knows what's ahead, he knows what's behind you, he knows what's all around, mm -hmm. and he's always protecting us. And notice in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. When you look at Psalms 39, some people may, may, may be alarmed. God knows what I think. God knows what I say. He's always watching me. Some people may be scared by this, but this is a, the reason he does this is because he loves us and wants to protect us and benefit us. Mm -hmm. right. Why? Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Would you like the Lord to say, I'll be back. I'll see you after I come back from vacation in about three weeks. Oh, that would be horrible for us, wouldn't it? <laughs> because the devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So we should be grateful that the Lord is with us. Psalm 139, verse 5, you have hedged, in the King James Version it says, beset. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. This is a caring, loving God. Notice uh, that this word hedged or beset can be uh, negative or it can be positive because it means also to bind, to besiege, to confine, to cramp, but it also means to secure. And this is in the sense of positive, securing us. Uh, how do we know that? Because verse 6 says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot obtain it. The psalmist was so impressed by the fact that God is there constantly, continually, 24 hours a day, every minute of the day, every second of the day, God is with us, protecting us uh, from all the harm that the devil would like to do to us. And I am sure that those listening to me, uh, many can say, well, God has saved my life at least once. Mm -hmm. And I know maybe here some of us may raise our hands. Yes, God has saved my life at least once. I know several times the Lord has saved my life mm -hmm. because the devil seemed that he wanted to destroy in some way or another or cause great harm. And the Lord protected us from that. 
I go to Psalm 62, verse 7 and 8. Notice what it says here. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times. You people pour out your heart before Him. Uh, God is a refuge for us. God is a refuge for us. I encourage you to trust Him at all times. Now, we're going to look at some verses that tell us that God is omnipresent once more. We go to Psalm 139, beginning in verse 7. Where can I go hmm. from your spirit? Hmm. Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. Notice, lead me. And your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Whether you're going through times that you consider light or where you go, whether you're going through times that seem darkness and troubling, God is there. Mm -hmm. And we can trust Him. And we can be at peace knowing that He is in control. Psalm 139, 13. For you formed my inward parts. Mm -hmm. You covered me in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Mm. Amen. Praise the Lord for His Amen. goodness and His mercy. I'm reading to you from a book, Christian Education by Ellen G. White, page 195. Notice these thoughts. But His energy is still exerted in upholding the objects of His creation. It is not because the mechanism that He has once set in motion continues to act by its own inherent energy, that the pulse beats and breath follows breath, but every breath, every pulsation of the heart is an evidence of the all-pervading care of Him in whom we live and move and have our being, Amen. as it is written in Acts 17, 28. It is not because of inherent power that year by year the earth produces her bounties and continues her motion around the sun. The hand of God guides the planets and keeps them in position in their orderly march through the heavens. He bringeth out their host by number, and he calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. From Isaiah 40, verse 26, trust in the Lord. He's always there, and he will always be with you. Trust him completely, no matter what circumstances you're facing, because he cares for you and has your best interest in mind, and I praise the Lord for that. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Danzi. Powerful Beginning to this lesson, my name is Ryan Day. I have Monday's lesson entitled Assurance of God's Care. And that title just really sums it all up of what we're going to talk about over the next 10 minutes together. Um, we're going to be diving right into the Psalms, multiple Psalms here. We're going to be looking at Psalm 40, Psalm 50, Psalm 55. We're going to jump into Psalm 121. And uh, we're going to see that there is a common theme among all of these texts. And by the way, these are not the only texts. There are multiple, multiple texts that we have already read and heard just in these opening three lessons of, of this uh, study on the book of Psalms. But um, Monday's lesson is bringing out, emphasizing and highlighting the fact that we can be assured. We can know with absolute certainty and have trust in the fact that God provides for us. He takes care of us and he's there for us. Uh, Psalm chapter 40 verses 1 through 3. Uh, the point we're making here is that God, he directs and he delivers us. He promises that. Notice what it says here in Psalm 40 verses 1 through 3. He says, I, wait, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit. Have you been in a pit in your life? Have you found yourself in a dark, despairing pit at some point? If you haven't, eventually you will. Can you hold to and have uh, the, the beautiful outlook that the psalmist is writing here? It says, He also brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He set my feet up on a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear it and will trust in the Lord. And so he directs. He delivers. He's there for us. Psalm chapter 50 and verse 15. 
lots of texture to go through, so uh, I want to try to get to as many of them as we can. Psalm chapter 50 and verse 15, same point here. I call, uh, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, says the Lord, and you shall glorify me. So God promises. He says, look, call upon me. I will deliver you. Now, here's the thing. Never make the mistake that in, in the immediate aftermath of you calling on him, that your deliverance will be there. Sometimes uh, God's timing is not your timing, but indeed the promise is there. He says, call out on me, call up on me, and I will deliver you in the day and you shall glorify me. And so Psalm chapter 55 and verse 22, he brings rest to the weary. So these texts that we're reading here are showing us different aspects and how God uh, cares for his people. He brings rest to the weary. Psalm 55 verse 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. And, and I love this text because it reminds me also of what we see in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 when Jesus says, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jesus of course showing up as man he robed in flesh. He is the very direct personification of what we see in the Father. And he's revealing again what the psalmist is writing here, that God is there for you. He will bring rest to the weary. God supports us. He's there for us. Uh, he assists you. And of course, he never sleeps on you either. In other words, uh, he's not going to go and take a nap while you're out here in the world and doing your thing and forget about you. God is always there for you. Notice what Psalm 121 says. Of course, we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Uh, Psalm 121 verses 1 through 8, it says, I will, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. I love that. So not only is he there to support you, is he there to assist you, is he there to direct you? He's not sleeping on you either. I love that. Behold, he who keeps Israel, notice, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at, at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from the, this time forth and even furthermore. So again, we have this deep assurance and this promise that God is there for you. He's there for you in a way that no one else will be. And we have that beautiful promise in the Lord. There is no need to fear as we have brought out because God also brings protection. His care brings protection. And I go now over into Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 just to establish and further solidify the point that this lesson is trying to make and that is that God takes care of his people. Um, maybe not always again in the immediate timing that you're expecting because sometimes God would allow us to fall into various trials and challenges and difficulties because it builds perseverance, it builds faith, it builds patience and it builds character but nonetheless God promises to deliver and to come through. And so Isaiah 41 verse 10, I love this. Fear not, he says, for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's one of my favorite Bible texts in all the Bible. Isaiah 43, you got to read that one as well. 43 verses one and two. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I love that. <laughs> I love Amen. that. You're mine, he says. You're my child. And so he says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Notice how it doesn't say, I will save you from the waters. Mm -hmm. When you, when you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. Notice how he says, I'm going to take you, I'm going to completely bring you out of the waters or make you far away from the waters. He's with us through these trials. He'll allow us sometimes to go through these trials, but he's with us through it. Uh, just as uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, that's their real names. I like to refer mm -hmm. to them by that. Uh, he didn't save them from the fires, but he saved them through the fires. And that's what this promise is. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. That's Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2. God cares and and supplies our need. He's got you. I love that. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 to 33. Therefore do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for after all these things the Gentiles seek saying the heathens of the world, those who are non-believers, the people who have no hope in Christ, they worry about those things. It says for your father in heaven knows that you need all these things but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So God's got you. Okay so no matter where you are in your life and no matter what you're going through he's going 
going to provide for your need. His care brings, again, a providing hand and supplies all your needs. Uh, God's care comforts our sorrows, our pains, and our anxieties, our, our, our mental stress that we go through in this life. And this life certainly brings them. And again, I go back to that text I quoted earlier, Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I love that. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Those are those, some of the most amazing words you could hear from your creator. Mm. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. He's a wonderful God and you can trust him. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Sometimes you can't even comprehend it. Will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We have these hopes. We have this beautiful, beautiful promise. And of course, I, I, I end with this one. God's care brings hope. His care brings hope. I love this. <laughs> Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. Sometimes you may go through some stuff in this life. Sometimes, again, like I said multiple times already, you may fall into various trials and difficulties that may at times make you wonder, Lord, where are you? Do you even hear me? Are you there? We see that in the Psalms. We've seen it so far. There are many Psalms dedicated to the fact that even God's very servants are there crying out and lamenting, Lord, do you even hear me? Do you care for me? But yet we still have the promise. God says, look, if there's evidence that I've worked in your life, if there's evidence that I am here in your life and I'm working in your life, be confident in the fact that if I've started it, I'm going to complete it Amen. all the way to the end of Jesus Christ. And of course, Revelation 21 verses 4 and 5, we have hope in the fact that in God's care, there's the ultimate hope of all, that none of these trials, none of these difficulties, none of these tribulations that we deal with and go through in this lifetime are everlasting because it says here in Revelation 21 verses 4 and 5, and God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. There's coming a time when it's all going to go away. There shall be no more death. There shall be no more sorrow nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne says, and I love these words, behold, I make all things new. Amen. I'm looking forward to that time. And as I was preparing this lesson, going through all these beautiful texts, I couldn't help but think of that powerful hymn, that beautiful classic hymn. Uh, through days of toil when heart doth fail, God will take care of you. I love that. When dangers fierce your path assail, God will take care of you. And what's the chorus? God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. It's not just a song. It's not just a hymn. It's not just empty words. They're promises that have been proven all through since humanity has ever been. Amen. Put your hand and trust in God. He will take care of you. Amen. 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 Praise Lord. the Lord. Thank you very much. It's been a blessing and we hope you will stay by because more blessings are coming. Ever wish you could study more deeply along with the three ABN Sabbath School panel members? Well, now you can. Just send an email request to ssp at 3abn.org and we'll email you the Sabbath School panelist notes on a weekly basis to enhance your own study of God's Word. That address again is ssp at 3abn.org. We'd love to send you their notes just as they've prepared them. Thank you for watching and thank you for being part of our 3ABN Sabbath School panel family. Welcome back. It's been a blessing so far, and we look forward to more blessings as we continue with Sister Shelley Quinn. Thank you so much, Johnny, and thank you, our singer in Israel, Ryan. I'm Shelley Quinn. I have Tuesday. The Lord is a refuge in adversity. I love the humility of God. The more you study the Bible, the more you recognize His divine humility. And in loving condescension, God actually likens himself 
to an eagle that's hovering over its nest, mm -hmm. or to a mother hen who wants to gather his children under his protective wings. Listen to this, Exodus 19, 4 and 5. This is when the Israelites had finally, after three months, reached Mount Sinai. They had not cleansed themselves yet. They had not heard the Ten Commandments yet from God speaking them to them. But Exodus 19, 4 and 5, God tells uh, Moses, he says, go tell the children, mm -hmm. you have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore you on eagles' wings, mm -hmm. and I brought you to myself. That is covenant love language. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all all people, mm -hmm. for all the earth is mine. In Deuteronomy 32, 11 and 12, he says, as an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up and carrying them on wings, so the Lord alone led them. What I love about when we were in the Psalms, you're going to hear about the feathers and the pinions and being under the wings. This is all reference to God's protection. Let's look at Psalm 91. Oh, this is a great Psalm. Mm -hmm. There are 18 promises of divine protection in this Psalm, but I'm going to tell you up front and pay attention. They only apply to those who abide in the secret place. Let's look. Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells where? In the secret place of the Most High. This isn't a place that's not known. It's just not common to dwell there. This is a close intimacy having a relationship of close intimacy through the Messiah and you're related, you're biding in that relationship. So he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Notice the abiding. It's you're, you're dwelling there. It's constant. It's continuous. It's not just during times of trouble. See, we've got to know that God's ways are perfect, that we can trust Him. We've got to know that He's sovereign. Anything that comes into our life, God doesn't cause the trouble, mm. but He allows it sometimes for a specific reason. It's for our eternal benefit. So these promises are conditioned on abiding in this relationship with him. I will say of the Lord, here's the psalmist, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Can you say that? He's my refuge, my God in whom I will trust. You know, he's the only one that can be trusted in times of trouble. That's a frequent theme throughout the Psalms. So we're going to see if we abide in the secret place, we have to trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And trust is a deliberate choice. It's a deliberate choice to acknowledge God's sovereignty right. over us in all circumstances. And what the quarterly brings out, if trust does not work in adversity, it's not going to work anywhere. Mm. So verse 3, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. This is Satan's snares. He's, he's trying to entrap you. And from the perilous pestilence, he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. This is an intimate picture of God's protection and security that we find in him. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. That's the shield of faith. And that's the buckler was the coat of mail that protected the body. This is the armor of God. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, 
nor of destructions that lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Perhaps the psalmist was thinking back to the time of the Passover night in Egypt. But verse 8 says, only with your eyes mm -hmm. shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. We're going to be like a spectator mm. when that judgment is poured out. We will look. But then here we go. Verse 9 connects back to verse 1. It says, because you get all of these divine promises, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Mm. You're abiding in the secret place of the Lord. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up to keep you your foot, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Mm -hmm. So far we're hearing the psalmist words. Now the Lord speaks and makes a pledge. This is Psalm 91 verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, the Lord says, therefore I will deliver him. Mm -hmm. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Do you know God created you for a love relationship with him. That's what he's looking for. And when you understand what he did for you mm -hmm. to save you, when you understand his unconditional love, I promise you, you can't help but fall in love with him. We love mm -hmm. him because he first loved us. Right. And then you'll call upon him. He says, verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him mm -hmm. in trouble. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, Ryan, mm -hmm. no promise that there's not going to be trouble. Jesus said, in this world, we'll have many tribulations. So when you become a Christian and you love the Lord and you dwell in the most secret place, it doesn't mean that your life is carefree. You can ask anybody up here. We could spend hours talking about what's going on in our lives that are difficult. Mm -hmm. But the promise of God is that I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long Life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Him, if you look to the Lord and love him, and we know that we're going to go through, in this great controversy, we're going to go through times of tribulation. But he promises to protect those mm -hmm. who dwell in the secret place. Let me get on to Psalm 17, verses 5 through 9, because I love this too. Psalm 17, verse 5. He says, uphold my steps in your path. You know, the Psalm 85, 13 says that righteousness goes before Christ and makes his path, a, uh, 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 his steps a place for us to follow. So he says, uphold my steps in your path that my footsteps may not slip. Again, Psalm 15, Psalm 17, five through nine. I have called upon you for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my speech, show your marvelous loving kindness, you have said by your right hand, O oh, you who save those who trust in you from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me under the shadow of your wings. First Peter 1, 4 through 5. Peter says, we're called to an incorruptible inheritance. And he says, you, it's reserved in heaven for you, and you are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed at the end. God is our refuge. 
in Amen. adversity. Amen. 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 Yes, he is. Thank you, Shelley. Psalm 91. Lots of people love Psalm 91, but the, the psalm that I'm focusing on, I'm Daniel Perrin and I have Wednesday's lesson, Defender and Deliverer. Maybe you don't know this one very well. So if you are able to get your Bible out and open it up to Psalm 114. And if you like to get a head start, put a little bookmarker in 1 Corinthians 10, because we're going to go there in just a little bit. Isn't it amazing how a song, just a song can bring you back in time. You hear just a couple of notes and all of a sudden you're back at your wedding or some childhood event, or you're taken to church in your mind or you hear the national anthem, whatever it might be, and all of a sudden, feelings come up. Well, Psalm 114 is one of those psalms. Listen to it, I don't know the music, but here's the psalm. <laughs> when Israel went out of Egypt, and all of a sudden, people are taken back in time to an event of the past. And you look at this psalm here, Psalm 114, just eight verses. In the Hebrew language, it's just 52 words. Such a sparse picture of the Exodus is painted here. And this is actually a psalm that was sung during the Passover experience, uh, one of the Passover praises. There's all sorts of more comprehensive tellings of Israel's history, but this one just takes a couple of little details and it just tells them so plainly. It's not like a video montage of, of music overlaid with pictures. It just says, here's what happened. And people are pulled back into this event. So what is this event? Well, we ask God, we say, Lord, show me your glory. Mm. He says, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to remind you of what I've already done. And as Shelley already pointed out, God had done that from the start there in Exodus 19, verse 4, when they're, they're fresh out of this experience of the Exodus. And he says, you've seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore you on eagle's wings and I brought you to myself. Look at this intimate experience. Remember your relationship with me. Don't Amen. forget that relationship. And so this, this remembering that God calls us to in this song here, it's more than just a mental exercise. Mm -hmm. When Israel went out of Egypt. No, this is like, like me saying to my wife, remember the day that our first daughter was born? Oh man, and all, all sorts of stuff comes to mind. And that's what God is saying here, transported back, re-experiencing what God has done. That's what he's asking us mm. to do here. And so for the people of Israel, they're, they're remembering the sands of Egypt and the monuments that they may have built with their own hands and, and the skies and the temperatures and, and the bitterness of the slavery. And then God remembered us and sent a deliverer and there were plagues and deliverance and the Passover and all of that comes back to mind and they begin to think about this God who loves them. You might be saying to yourself, well, the Exodus, that's such a distant memory and I wasn't even there. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. All right, verse 1 to 4, and just verse 1 right off the bat. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea. Hmm. Now Paul's talking here to Jewish Christians and to Gentile converts who have no Jewish heritage, and he calls them our fathers. This is their history. This is our history. Amen. This is your history. Mm -hmm. This is not just dusty, distant memories of other people. This is my memory book, my scrapbook, my photo album. This is my story of how God has brought me to the place where I am today. So this story of the Exodus, it's more than just an account of other people. And this is such an important point because we oftentimes look at the Bible as archives of of other people's experiences, but they are our experiences with yeah. Christ. Mm -hmm. We sometimes look at this like a history class. Yeah, all right, we'll, we'll laugh at what they did. We'll look at the dates, some, some history factoids, but no, this is me and Jesus. And so we need to change the way I look at, the way they look at the Bible sometimes. These stories are indispensable, like my birthday, like my wedding day, like my first day of work. Now keep on going. I'm gonna go down to verse three in 1 Corinthians 10. All were baptized into Moses, in the cloud and in the sea. 
all ate, sorry, that was verse two. Now we're in verse three. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Christ. Yeah. They were not just traveling. They were there to meet Jesus. This is the story of Jesus. This is the gospels. Is there any part of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that are dispensable that we could get rid of that part? No, it's all precious. It's all intentional. All of the Gospels is a treasure, and the Old Testament stories are the Gospels written in advance. Amen. It is the story of Jesus. And so, right here in Psalm 114, we have the story of Jesus. When Israel went out of Egypt, when they were in bondage, when sin had them oppressed, when they could not get out, when they needed to be purged of all the influences of sin that had, that had grown into them, that had overtaken them, a deliverer was sent. And as they sing just the first notes of this song, they're pointed forward to the full story. This is the story of your experience with Jesus. And it's also a window into our condition. And we find this theme all through the Bible. Abraham was called out of Ur. Joseph brought out, uh, you know, rescued in Egypt. You have the, the people of Judah brought out of Persia. Listen to a couple of these texts in John 8, 34 to 36. You're going to find the story of Psalm 114 here. Jesus answered them, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, mm -hmm. this is the story of the Exodus, you shall be free indeed. Mm -hmm. Colossians 1, 13 and 14, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us mm -hmm. into, the, into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption. That's the story of the Exodus. So now back to Psalm 114. Remember, this is our heritage, it's our history, and we're gonna see nature personified as if all of nature that God created is joyfully involved in the experience of saying, I wanna bring you out from sin. Verse three, the sea saw it and fled. Jordan turned back. Those were the two obstacles that were uncrossable there. The mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like lambs, and the imaginative ones of us are taking this literally, watching mountains fly away. But really, this is the, the shaking of the mountain, the earthquake as God descends upon Mount Sinai and says, let me truly rescue you by showing you my character and who I am. Here is the law, the transcript of who I am. And so we see all of this happening here and the message for us, let's just, sorry, verse five and six, we gotta get to that. What ails you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back, O mountains, that you skipped like rams, O little hills, like lambs. Don't forget what God has done. Mm -hmm. The message is, mm -hmm. remember, yeah. remember where God has led you. This is not someone else's experience right. only. And then we get to the conclusion, verse seven. The attention so briefly on the story takes us here. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. Mm. And O earth includes me. Mm -hmm. It includes yeah. those mm -hmm. at this table. It includes all of you. Tremble, O earth. Sometimes we make ourselves untouchable by emotion. Mm -hmm. That we just are not moved by the stories of God. Yeah, I've heard that before. In our age of the internet and streaming movies and access to anything online, anywhere, I can go see a picture of any place in the world and I can create imaginative fictional landscapes and worldscapes, <laughs> endless entertainment. The real story, the real thing that ought to occupy our attention and move our hearts sometimes just doesn't capture our attention. Nothing wows us and we have to give ourselves permission to say, I'm going to be impressed with God. Just a single melody of any one of these Psalms ought to bring to our attention, look what God has done for them and look what he's done for me. Mm -hmm. This is the real power. So verse seven, tremble O earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of water. And we see this theme a number of places in the Bible. We'll see it a couple more places. Psalm 104, 32, he looks on the earth and it trembles. Mm 
Mm. We have an example set for us here. Job 9, 6, he shakes the earth out of its place and its pillars tremble. This is the earth showing us that we can be amazed at God. We can be incredibly awed by him, that it takes over us and we say, yes, Lord, you're powerful. Job 26, 11, the last one, the pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his rebuke. God says, look back at what I've done to you. Be impressed because I love you and I'll keep on taking care of you. Amen. Thank you so much, Daniel. What an incredible study. Shelley, Ryan, Pastor Johnny, I love this study. The Lord hears and delivers. I'm Jill Morricone. On Thursday, we take a look at help from the sanctuary. And there are so many Psalms that I'm supposed to cover today. We won't mention them right now, but hopefully we get through most of them. Um, I've put it together into a list. Seven things God provides from His sanctuary. Number one, God hears us, that's you and I, when we're in trouble from the sanctuary. For that, we look at Psalm 18, verse 6. Psalm 18, 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried out to my God. Have you ever cried out to God when you were in distress? Where does he hear from? He heard my voice from his temple and my cry came before him, even to his ears. He hears us from the sanctuary. Psalm 3 verse 4 says something very similar. I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. Takeaway number one, if you're in trouble, seek him in his sanctuary. So many times when we go through a trial or we go through a trouble, we tend to go elsewhere. God might be our last resort or the last person we turn to. Sometimes we turn to other people around us. <gasps> Do you know what I'm going through? Would you help me right now? Sometimes we turn inward and we tend to ruminate on the problem and figure out what we're supposed to do with it. But instead of all those things, our first line of defense should be to look to God. Look to God in his sanctuary. Cry out to him for help. And what does it mean? How do we find him in the sanctuary? If you look at Exodus 25, verse 8, God is speaking here. He says, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. What was the purpose of the tabernacle? What was the purpose of the sanctuary? That God's presence would be with his people. Where do you find the presence of God? I find the presence of God when I open up the Word of God and I study. I find the presence of God when I talk to Him in prayer and He talks to me through His Word. I find the presence of God in praying with other people in going to church and fellowshipping with brothers and sisters in Jesus. There's many ways that we can be in His sanctuary, many ways that we can be in His presence. Number two, God brings help and gives strength from his sanctuary. For this, we look at Psalm 20, verses one to three. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice, Selah. Sit, think about that a moment. Help comes from the sanctuary. Takeaway number two, if you need victory, if you need strength in your life, spend time in his sanctuary. Now that means we spend time in the word of God. We spend time in our devotional life with Jesus. We spend time with his people in church. Spend time in his sanctuary. Number three, God offers protection and safety. Where? In his sanctuary. Psalm 27 verse five. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, in the sanctuary, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. God literally hides us in his sanctuary. Psalm 61 verse four, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. You and I are safe in his sanctuary. Takeaway number three, if you need protection or you are afraid, hide in his sanctuary. Take shelter as it were under the wings of the Almighty. Number four, God provides joy and pleasure, where? In his sanctuary. 
Psalm 36, verse 8. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. Takeaway number four, if you need fullness of joy, if you're lacking joy in your Christian experience, find it in his sanctuary. Amen. Shelley, we love the Psalm 1611. Mm -hmm. In your presence, Whoa. in the sanctuary, in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Mm -hmm. It is the presence of God that brings joy in the life of the believer. If you want more joy in your Christian walk, if you need victory, if you need strength, sp spend time in the presence of God. So many times we seek for joy, like broken cisterns mm -hmm. in other places, seeking to fill it with things. Sometimes we fill it with music. Sometimes we fill it with reading. Sometimes we fill it with a ceaseless round of even doing good. Joy is only found in the presence of Jesus mm -hmm. in his sanctuary. Number five, God is to be praised. Where? In his sanctuary. Psalm 84, verse four. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Where do we praise God? We praise God in worship. We praise God at church. And yes, we praise God in private in our time with Jesus. That's also in his presence. Psalm 134 verse 2. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Takeaway number five, praise him in his sanctuary. Spend time when you're in the presence of God. Spend time praising him. I think so many times we spend time ooh, asking for things. We spend time complaining. We spend time wishing and grumbling and whining. Spend time in praise Amen. in mm -hmm. his sanctuary. Number six, God brings clarity in his sanctuary. For this, we're going to Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verse 17. We don't have time to read this all, but this is an incredible psalm. It's a question. The psalmist is crying out, why are the wicked prospering? I don't understand. It's almost a crisis of faith. There's a struggle with doubt, envy against the wicked who appear to be doing well. And God, how long? Why aren't you taking care of the righteous? And then we discover in verse 17, David finds the answer. Psalm 73, 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. You see, in the sanctuary, we receive clarity. Now, I want to talk specifically about the Old Testament sanctuary, the tabernacle service, and that we get a proper understanding of the plan of salvation, how God saves sinners. And then we see the final destiny of the wicked. That brings clarity to our understanding. Takeaway number six, if you have questions, answers can come in his sanctuary. Understanding God, understanding his word brings clarity. Understanding the plan of salvation, understanding the great controversy brings clarity to those questions that we have. Finally, number seven, God brings salvation in his sanctuary. Now it's clearly through Jesus. We know that we are saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. It is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. But when you study the sanctuary, the Old Testament sacrificial system, you unpack the entire plan of salvation and you learn about Jesus, the Lamb of God, who was sacrificed for your sins and mine. When you step into the holy place. You see the table of showbread and you learn about the importance of the word of God in the Christian's life. You see that altar of incense and the oil with the candlesticks and discover the importance of the Holy Spirit and prayer. 
you experience the joy of witnessing all of that, that growth in the Christian's life comes from this understanding of the experience of the sanctuary. So what does God provide from his sanctuary? He hears us in trouble. He gives us help and strength. He offers us protection and safety. He provides joy and pleasure. He is to be praised in his sanctuary. He brings clarity and understanding to our minds and to our hearts. And he brings salvation through the blood of Jesus. When by faith we reach out and accept that, he covers us with his righteousness. And then he encourages us to walk in newness of life. I love that, what you and I can find and experience for ourselves in the presence of God in his sanctuary. Amen. Amen. What a blessing has been to hear each and every one of you. We have a few moments so that each one may share a final thought, beginning with Pastor Amen. Ryan. Yeah, you know, um, we're reminded in Monday's lesson that we absolutely have assurance of God's care. And I just want to uh, repeat again Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. It's a beautiful promise and one of my favorite texts. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. I just want to remind you of Psalm 91, that he who dwells in the most secret place in that intimate relationship with God can claim God as their refuge. He speaks in Psalm 91, 14 saying, because you have set your love upon me, God is saying, therefore I'll deliver you, I'll set you on high and you shall call upon him and he will answer you and be with you in times of trouble. Mm -hmm. Israel's God is our God. It's the God of the Exodus who took them out of slavery and sin. He wants to take you out of slavery and sin. Give yourself permission to be impressed with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Spend time in the sanctuary. Spend time in the presence of God. It might seem overwhelming, but just take five minutes a day. 10 minutes a day, experience the presence of God in your life. Amen, amen. Thank you, each and every one of you. And I'd like to leave you with Psalm 145, verse 18. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. If you're going through difficulties, it is our prayer that this program has been a blessing to you to know that God is near, He can be trusted, he loves you and wants to bless you. And we have heard that he's always with us at all times. And we encourage you to continue to trust him no matter what you are going to. Trust him at all times because he's our refuge and our strength. Next week's lesson is singing the Lord's song in a strange land. Join us. <laughs>